Hey guys, today's video is going to be about enhancing your traditional illustrations, especially if you're doing them with alcoholic brush markers. We're going to be going over certain principles, tips, and techniques that I feel enhance your marker illustrations. The rules will apply to whatever brush markers you're using, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be using Sad Day AM Partners Spectrum Noir alcoholic brush markers with their Illustrator line. A little bit of their classiques as well, which are chisel tip, but the majority of this video is going to be using brush markers. And we've got a couple more over here. So one of the first things I recommend, depending on your style, hell, you might not even be one who inks at all, but if you do, try to leave spaces. Try not to completely ink the drawing. You want to leave spaces on the parts of the illustration you feel that light would heavily, intensely hit the most. The parts that coincide or overlap with the line work where light is also hitting very intensely, yeah, leave that. And you kind of also do the same thing while coloring as well, as you will see. Doing this actually makes the illustration look more realistic, right? Because when you see people, you don't see them with outlines, you know what I mean? But again, with the style I'm going for here, there is a sense of realism, but then there's also a sense of style, especially one that is more in line with the Japanese aesthetic with manga and anime and things like that. In fact, the character I'm drawing is an original character for my series, Apple Black. I'll talk about that more a little bit at the end of the video, but the point here is to not show line work in places that will make the illustration look a little more realistic and giving the illustration overall an extra oomph. Another way to do this is to actually use white pigment ink pens or white ink straight up and going over the illustration once it's done, covering up parts of the line you don't want showing. And again, this could be stylistic. There are artists out there who don't use black dark ink at all for the same purpose, right? To give the illustration, whatever it is, a sense of realism. Because when you look at people in real life, they don't have outlines all over their bodies. So for example, my character here, Opal, there's certain parts of the illustration I'm just not inking at all because I know that the sunlight in this case is actually going to hit those parts of the illustration so hard that drawing outlines would kind of battle with the sunlight and like the bounce light and the highlights on the illustration so I just don't draw it at all. And I leave the pencils there just to make sure that I still know the boundaries that I'm going to be coloring in. And then afterwards I get rid of the pencils. Because this is traditional media, some mistakes can be final. So before you actually lay out the colors and put it on the illustration, you want to have a game plan. One that you have a lot of confidence in and you have a lot of confidence in yourself to execute. You want a firm grasp on the coloring overall. You want an understanding of the light sources, how intense they're going to be, how you're going to shade, what's the tone of the whole illustration. Everything needs to be planned way ahead. You want to know how to blend with the markers you're using, how to use this colorless blender test the markers to create swatches if necessary so you know the actual color each marker produces at least the ones you're going to use make sure you're comfortable overall because all these steps help you build confidence for the illustration so you're not afraid of making mistakes too often because you know you're prepared a basic understanding of color theory doesn't hurt even if you're actively studying it for example here i organize the codes for markers that i know i'm going to be using from lighter hues to darker hues and then i even test them and see how they blend with each other on the side you kind of want to always do this at least with the markers you know you're going to use test the colorless blender if you have to here i'm going to use spectrum noir's illustrator line colorless blender and first you want to lay down the colorless blender to make sure that part you want to color over is kind of wet with the alcohol doing this makes blending between different markers a little easier. I like to start from the lighter hue to the darker hue but either way is fine. A little bit of an observational tutorial here as you see me trying to make them blend and form this gradient. And you want to make sure you keep going back and forth with the darker hue and the lighter hue all over again and again until you don't see the actual brush strokes but rather a seamless blend. My second attempt here, I'm not going to use the colorless blender because sometimes you don't actually need it, especially if the colors in question are already close to each other. See, everything I'm using here is kind of yellowish and kind of gold, so it's easier to blend when you have colors like that. But I tend to try to use the colorless blender, especially if the markers in question are vastly different like the sample I'm doing right now. These are good tests to prepare you for what's to come, young grasshopper. Oh yeah, you can think of colorless blenders as marker erasers to a degree. And then you can also use them sometimes to push the alcohol back in line if you color across boundaries you don't want to. On to the actual coloring, I start adding the highlights and the bounce lights first, kind of like forming that silhouette. And I make sure to go from light to dark slash saturated hues. 
we got intense sunlight from behind hitting the character. So I'm showing down the edges, creating this white edge all across, creating a gradient that slowly as we look towards the center of the illustration, it's going from like that white to a darker yellow, giving the piece a sense of warmth. It also helps to look at illustrations or real life photos that kind of try to mimic this as well. And you can use that as reference starting out. Then over time, once you use that reference after a while, you start to get the hang of it to the point where you no longer need the reference. Again, the intensity is dictating how dark the center is going to be, but the edges are just getting brighter, going from warmth to white, because any part that the light source actually hits, that's kind of going to be white, and then you're going to have this warm yellow surrounding it, because it's making that gradual process from white to a warm yellow. And it's yellow because that's the primary color the light source, the sun in this case, is emitting. At least for this illustration. Now if the surrounding was really warm and everywhere was really hot, it would look like, well, how Australia looks right now. So here you have opal directly in front of the sunlight and that kind of makes everything towards the center a little darker. And then as you go towards the edges, it gets lighter and warmer until it's like straight up white. And even here while coloring, we do still leave some parts uncolored to show depth and kind of show how the light is hitting other areas of the object, in this case, the character. Definitely not coloring over the parts that we left blank during the inking. But here we're assuming that there is a subtle, normal, maybe fluorescent light shining on her in front of her. So the sun is coming from behind while a regular white, maybe fluorescent light is coming from the front. And that's why we still get to see the majority of her actual colors in all of its glory. And it's not all a bunch of yellow. Kind of still is to a degree, but we get to see more of the original colors. Basically two different light sources, a really intense one from behind, very warm from the sun, and then one from the front that's pretty subtle, maybe white, calm, normal. Now the trees behind her are doing you know the same thing we're going in with the light source highlights and like the bounce lights are going with that first and it's going to be really yellow it's in the background you can imagine that it's blurry hence why we're not actually drawing any line work there is no inking done there at all not even pencils i'm kind of like freestyling it to a degree and having fun with it also so it's just kind of like yellow and doing some little things here and there to add some greens in the parts that would be almost like shading to a degree. So the same way we're seeing the actual colors in the center of the character Opal, we're seeing like the actual greens a little bit in the trees, but it's still a little overshadowed with the yellow. So it's kind of like a very yellowish warm green, but the further you go up closer to where the light source is coming from, it just gets warmer and warmer until it's, you know, all white. Even with the branches, I'm going in with the normal colors, but I'm going over those colors with the same warm yellows just to give it that tone, that tint, and giving the whole background warmth. Which is one of the primary moods and feelings that I want you to take away from this illustration. Also, not doing the line works for the background gives it, again, that blurry feel. Imagine you're taking a photo, the characters and focus and everything else is blurry. So here, the way we mimic that is by not actually inking anything in the backgrounds and just winging it to a degree. You never really want to rush. You want to take your time and color smoothly, go over it and over it again until you're not leaving any brush marks. Try to avoid that as much as possible. One tip to note when using alcoholic brush markers is that most of them, when you lay down the alcohol, if you allow it dry just a little bit, even if you go over it again with the same color, it can appear darker. So you can actually use the same brush to create shade or volume or different hues by just leaving some parts drier than others, like controlling how much alcohol is gonna be on what part of the paper. And then remember to use the colorless blender where applicable. Even though we left some parts uninked and uncolored, we can still go over the illustration again with some white ink to emphasize like the light source hitting certain parts of the character, especially in the eyes. Usually the eyes are the best place to just give that character extra life. And as you can see with this process, I'm also poking little white holes in the tree, making it look more realistic. And it's also where sunlight can pass through. So there'll also be some warmth emitting from there as well. So it's also cool because we've already made those parts pretty warm with all the yellows. I can also use the white ink to sharpen the edge of the character, making them pop a whole lot more. 
So here we have the illustration scanned in and you can actually do things to touch the illustration up to make it look a little better. One could argue that this kind of makes the illustration go from traditional art to at the very least mixed media, which I'm fine with. Now we use some adjustment layers, almost like filters. I do a little selective color. What that does, if you look at the properties, go from red to black, it kind of just messes with the blacks a little bit, turns blacks a little yellow, like anywhere you see some kind of shade of black, you kind of change the color here with the CMYK. That's the sand, magenta, yellow, and black. And so it can just tweak it a bit to make everything seem a little warmer. I put like a photo filter, giving the whole illustration a warm feel. It's very subtle. I don't like to overdo it because I don't want the illustration to then not feel traditional at the end of the day. Any touches I do with traditional art usually tend to be very minimal. I'm not trying to change too much. And the last thing I did was to increase the contrast. You can see, turn it on, turn it off. And the contrast here, I just increase it a little bit just to make the illustration a little sharper, saturated a little bit, and just to make it pop. But the real magic comes when I do the color dodge and I'm just going over certain parts, certain holes in the area where I feel like light will break through. And I go in with an airbrush. In some cases you can reduce the opacity. Here I reduce the opacity to 75. Just put it in certain parts of the illustration. This layer with the airbrush, I make sure that the blending mode is set to color dodge. All of a sudden I'm Ross Draws. And this makes everything pop, makes everything glow. In a good way, I think. Without, with, without, with. For the two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the illustration. It was fun to do. And don't forget to hit that like button. United States to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. This illustration was really done for the chapter 1.1 cover for Apple Black, which is part of the Apple Black remasters. Apple Black is published and serialized at Saturday AM, and if you guys are interested in reading it, links to free chapters are in the description, the first two volumes, and more. You can also get two free months of Skillshare, links will be in the description. You're welcome. Please follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Everything you could possibly need will be linked in the description. Check out my other videos for now, Sweat Manga, and I'm out of here.